guys, today what we're going to do is we're going to derive the Keynesian cross and then show the inflationary and deflationary gap. So first of all, let's label the axes on the Keynesian cross. So on the on the x-axis, what we have is y. This stands for the national income. And on the y-axis, what we have is expenditure, withdrawals, and injections. So the first one that goes on here is the, is the national income line, and that is the 45 degrees Keynesian line, just like that. And we label this y. y equals the domestic consumption plus the withdrawals from the economy. Withdrawals being, or the three main withdrawals are in the form of savings, taxes, and imports. So that's why we have a 45 degrees line there. Next, what we have is the expenditure curve, also known as aggregate expenditure or aggregate demand. Aggregate expenditure, also known as aggregate demand. And this is also domestic consumption, but this includes injections. And these injections include, this is from the circular flow, investment, which is highly dependent on something called the accelerator theory. So we'll just put all that AT. Exports and government expenditure. Government expenditure will mainly be prevalent in times of deep recession, such as coronavirus, in the form of fiscal policy. Mainly a contractionary or a expansionary fiscal policy. And this one we draw like this. Notice that it is it starts a lot higher up than the Y curve, and this is because there is going to be always some expenditure in the economy because obviously humans need to consume to survive. So that's why this starts slightly higher above. So now that we've got these two curves or lines, we need to add in our WJ model, which is the withdrawals and the injections. So injections are said to be completely independent of national income. We can also call this exogenous. And because they're exogenous, they're not affected. Therefore, it's just a straight line. And we can call that injections. Let me change the color for withdrawals. So withdrawals are said to be endogenous. And they are affected by national income because as national income rises, we're going to see more withdrawals in the form of savings. Definitely more in taxes if national income is rising. And imports. But imports is highly dependent on the exchange rate. For example, if we have a strong pound, so we can use the anagram spiced. Exports are going to be dear. If exports are dear and imports are cheap, there's going to be a lot more imports into the country. So we can draw this like that. Withdrawals. This is supposed to line up. Let me draw that again. And there's withdrawals. So as you can see, we can as you can see here, we have our this will be Y E. And this is the Nash the equilibrium national income. And if we were going to have an inflationary gap, 
or sorry, a deflationary gap, what we would have, I'll do this in another colour, our deflationary gap would be represented here. This would be our full employment line, and this gap from here to here, or here to here, represents our deflationary, also known as recessionary gap. And if we were to look at the an inflationary gap, we'll draw this in green, it would be this side. And that represents points here to here and here to here, an inflationary gap. And that is the Keynesian cross with a deflationary and inflationary gap. Thanks for watching.